The Tree Who Set Healthy Boundaries by Topher Payne, an alternate ending to Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree, created for the Atlanta Artist Relief Fund Storytime. Once there was a tree, and she loved the little boy. And every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples and they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew older, and the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree, and the tree said, Come, boy, come and climb up my trunk, and swing from my branches, and eat apples, and play in my shade, and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you'll have money and you'll be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and the tree was sad. And then one day, the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy, and she said, Come, boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a spouse, and I want children, and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? And the tree said, Okay, hold up. This is already getting out of hand. Look, I was fine with giving you the apples to help you get on your feet. They'll grow back next season anyway. But no, I'm not giving you a house. You know, I've seen boys like you pull this nonsense with other trees in the forest. First it's the apples, then branches, then the trunk, and before you know it, that mighty beautiful tree is just a sad little stump. Well, look here, boy. I love you like family, but I am not going down like that. And while we're on the subject, the tree said, grabbing him by the collar of his shirt, I recognize friendships evolve over time, and we may not see each other as often because you don't have time for your tree friends. But we used to be real tight. Now it feels like I only see you when you need something. How do you think that makes me feel? The boy took a long breath. He felt a sour rumble in his stomach, because he realized he hadn't considered his friend's feelings. I bet it makes you feel bad, said the boy. Yes, boy, bad. I can't even remember the last time you asked me how I'm doing. How are you, tree? asked the boy. He sincerely wanted to know. So the tree told the boy all the gossip from the forest and introduced him to the family of red squirrels that had moved into her trunk. While she was glad for the company the squirrels provided, she was concerned about the long-term health effects of hosting a burrow. So the boy called the local arborist, who explained that squirrels don't eat wood. They only build nests in pre-existing holes, so the tree was in no danger. The tree was so relieved, and so was the boy. He loved his friend and was concerned about her long-term health because she had taught him the importance of empathy. And so it continued, the tree and the boy looking out for each other like that, both of them content in the knowledge that someone had their back. The boy attended culinary school. The tree took courses online and got her certification in small business management. They did their homework together nearly every day. 
the boy became a pastry chef. Together, they opened a bakery selling the best apple pies anyone had ever tasted. It turned a profit in the first 18 months, which is most uncommon. Eventually, the boy had a child of his own. And much later, the child of the boy had children too. Because of their friendship, the boy was successful and fulfilled, and the tree grew wider and stronger, standing tall and beautiful in the forest for many, many, many years. Plus, a few years even more than that. And as each generation played in her strong old branches, the tree often thought back to the fateful day when the boy had asked her for a house. In truth, she would have gladly given him her branches to build one. She would have given him her trunk to build a boat. She loved him that much. But then she would have had nothing left, not for herself nor anyone else. And there never would have been a home for the red squirrels. There'd have been no hide and seek with the boy's grandchildren, no bakery with the best apple pies anyone ever tasted. Setting healthy boundaries is a very important part of giving. It assures you'll always have something left to give. And so the tree was happy. Everyone was. The end.